Hi, I'm Semben Jakob. This presentation is entitled Mode Stability Criterion Clearing a Common Misconception. Let me start off with the issue that I'm going to discuss here. And that is the case in which we have a loop gain of a system. This is mode plots of a loop gain. This is the gain. This is the phase. We see here again starting at high level, going down and eventually crossing the zero to be at this point. Now the phase here is pretty good. This is zero. This is the hundreds of it's about 90 degree. So we have a very nice phase margin. However, if you look here, we see that the phase going down below 180 degree, minus 180 degree, so there is a phase reversal here, while the gain at this point is very high. In this case, it's over 100,000. So one would think that if the phase reversal here is such that you have actually sort of positive feedback now, because at the beginning you had a negative feedback, this means negative feedback, and then you have a 180 degree phase reversal, so it's a positive feedback, and then you have a high gain, that the system will oscillate. Well, not necessarily. This is the point of this video that I'm going to discuss. Let me start off with the very basic principles because we are going to use them later on, and that is a feedback system. This is just a block diagram. We have the plant, we have the feedback path. This is just a transmission here, so the closed loop gain is the open loop over one plus beta A. Beta A is the loop gain. Now the reason why a system like this will be unstable is that when you have this A closed loop expression, you will have poles here at the denominators in the right half side of the complex plane. That is, if you have a pole here in this uh, Laplace representation, then uh, the time domain solution will be looking like e to the power of plus t something, and this means that the system will diverge, will not converge. For conversion, you need minus sign here. So this pole here, if this is a solution to this polynomial here in S, uh, means that the system will be unstable. Now a special case is when you have a solution on the J omega, that is the complex axis here, this is an oscillator. Okay, so this is a very special case, but in general we are talking about poles in the right half side of the complex plane. Now, how can we tell if there are poles that in the right half side of the complex plane? Well, we can use the Nyquist criterion. Here we have the Nyquist plane. This is a, this axis is the real of the loop gain. This is the imaginary of the loop gain. Now, here we're starting with the loop gain. This point is for frequency of zero, and it, this is the vector of the loop gain. This is the size, the magnitude, and this is the phase. So we go all the way here until we reach uh, frequency of infinity. Now this is the uh, mirror image here for negative frequencies. So this is the Nyquist circle, you might say. Now the criteria of Nyquist says that if you are not encircling the minus one point here, then you are in good shape, that is, you will not have poles in the right half side of the complex plane. Now this is correct for a minimum phase system, while if you have a right half plane zero, this will be a non-minimum phase system, so you have to take this into account. I am not discussing this in this presentation. So. We have here now a criteria that we can tell whether there are poles in the right half side of the complex plane, and this is the question of whether we encircled or not the minus one point. To ease the analysis, we can draw here a unity circle. This is the, the, this is the uh, geometric place of all vectors of 
size 1 and then we can say that if we are penetrating this unit circuit below this axis here then we are sure that we are not encircling the minus 1 point so we have to have some phase here phase difference which is defined as the phase margin until we reach this point and we'll encircle the minus 1 now the phase margin has to be uh, larger than say 45 degrees because a small phase margin is also making the system uh, behave oscillatory because uh, it, it will have a higher Q in closed loop response so therefore we'd like to keep the phase margin say 40, 45 degree or larger than that. Now this means that if we have a system which we are encircling like here the minus one point this system will be unstable. Now this has nothing to do with the fact that we feel sort of by intuition that if uh, this beta a becomes a negative that is a phase reversal and it is minus one then this blows up and it becomes unstable now this is the very special case of oscillators the Brackhausen uh, criteria we're not talking about this this is a very special case in general uh, it could be like we have it here that there is a phase reversal here it is and the amplitude is larger than one and that's fine so in other words it's going to be a number here which is larger than one with a minus sign that's fine you have some closed loop response and that's it so this is a very strong criteria the uh, Nyquist one that we can use it uh, to tell whether the system is going to be stable or not. The Nyquist plot was then actually simplified, you might say, by Bode, who actually broke this plot into two parts. Here we have a vector with a phase, so it's a, a complex number uh, which has uh, the two components to it, the size, the magnitude, and the phase. Now what Bode did is actually broke it into two parts. Here we have the magnitude and here we have the phase. And this curve here, this is the 0 dB, this is the uh, place of gain of 1, is in fact this unit circle. Okay, so this is the 0 dB line here and this is point, here's the penetration of this Nyquist plot into the unit circle. And as we have said, if we have a spare here, if it, there is a phase margin which is larger than zero, then this means that we are not going to encircle the minus one. And here, we see it here in the uh, next plot of the phase, and this is then the difference between 180 degree and the actual uh, phase at the loop gain equal to one, and this is then the phase, so we can very easily tell as to whether the system is going to be stable or not by looking at this. But now comes the question, what happens if we have this very large phase shift and the gain is much larger than 1? Well, we understand that this, this point is okay because uh, it's penetrating here at this particular frequency and the phase is okay but what about this well here is what will actually happen in this particular case let's go back and see what we have here we have a large phase reversal or large phase shift with a high gain so here it is we have a high gain and a large phase reversal more than 180 degree but then as we approach the zero we go this way so we are not encircling it in the uh, positive direction clockwise the minus one so therefore in this particular case the system is stable now the simple intuitive feeling is however that if you have a phase reversal and a high gain it seems that you'll have oscillation. I mean, that's the way it feels. So, in order to demonstrate that this is not the case, I'm showing here some simulation runs, uh, just to show that 
the Nyquist criteria is correct and that you can rely on it. So here it is. We have here an amplifier, you might say. This is the input, this is the output. This is a feedback. It's a unity gain or a follower, you might say. And I've defined this amplifier by using a ABM, analog behavioral model of P spice, which is the E Laplace. It's a very nice because you can define or use an expression in the S domain for the transfer function between the input and output. In other words, this unit will behave uh, according to this transfer function, both in the small signal AC analysis and in the time domain. Now the purpose of this source is to get the loop gain, the ratio between the voltage here and the voltage here is the loop gain of the system. The function of this source is to get the closed loop response. Now obviously they work one at a time, either this or this. And then I have added a time domain source that can be used in transient analysis. This is the step of one amp. And this is to check the response of the system to a disturbance at the output, which is one of the best way to see whether the system is stable or not. So this is a step current of one amp. Now the way this Laplace transform transfer function is defined is to get this large phase shift. Uh, so to demonstrate the point that I'm trying to make and to do that I have here three poles to begin with. These are the three poles here, this is the low frequency poles and so we had a roll off of uh, minus 60 dB per decade. In fact we have it like 250 degree phase shift. Then I have three zeros here. Here are the zeros. This makes it flat um, because of the, these three zeros which is so sort of cancel out the three poles. And then I have two poles more. Here are the, these two poles which cause a minus 40 dB per decade uh, drop. And then I have another zero, which is here, uh, sort of, we have a minus 20 dB per decade, and this is this 90 degrees that I have here, okay? So the crossover here at this frequency, at zero dB, uh, we have a phase of about 90 degree, which means that the phase margin is 90 degree, which is very nice. However, we do have this very large phase shift at this point and the gain is here very high. So what do we expect to see in the Nyquist plot? We are going to see this crossover frequency that is so when we are crossing the unit circle uh, the phase should be 90 degree but then we are going to see a large phase shift that is sort of swing of the vector uh, at high gain and then it'll come back. So here it is. We see this is the positive frequency. We see it going all the way. Here obviously the phase is larger than 180 degree. This is the mirror image of it for the, for the negative frequencies. However, we don't see what's going on here because the scale here is very high. This is one giga and this is minus half a giga. So this is very high. We can't see the minus one point. So here is a zoom on it and we see already that there is something happening here. This is now the curve. We see it's coming here. It's coming all the way here. Still the gain is very high. So we really don't see what's happening at the minus one point. So let's zoom farther. And here it is. We see the gain, the Nyquist plot going this way, and then it comes back, and here it's what's really happening. This is the zero, so the minus one here, and one more zooming clears up what's going on. So we see that we approach the zero with, and we cross it with about a 90 degree. This is exactly what we saw at the body, let me go back to the body plot. Uh, this is exactly what we see here. 
the 90 degree at the crossover frequency and this is exactly what we have here this is the unit circle we cross here this is the 90 degree and since we go this way we are not encircling the minus one point so let's test and see how this system behaves this is the closed loop response input to output and I'm sorry this should be zero this is not correct to have the minus here so this is just shifted by 180 degree uh, this is the phase and this is the magnitude this is a follower so the magnitude is one that is a gain of one uh, this particular case we have very high uh, large bandwidth and the phase is constant zero also until uh, we hit the crossover frequency now if we look here we see some hump here very little and if I zoom on it I see it here very little this will be consistent with the 90 degree uh, phase margin that we have so everything looks like we have a system of 90 degree phase margin with this crossover and this has no effect actually on what we see now the ultimate test as I have said is in the time domain so we are subjecting the system to a 1 amp step and we see here this disturbance which is uh, reasonable at the onset of the pulse we have a drop of about 120 millivolt and then we have an overshoot this is of course depend on the output impedance of this amplifier which I'm not discussing now the frequency of this phenomena here is about 5 megahertz this is if I look at the uh, this is like half a cycle here sort of and this corresponds to this point here so we don't see anything any remnants of this effect here that at very low frequency this is like uh, one kilohertz or something or below one between a few hundred hertz uh, this frequency here we don't see this effect at all we just see uh, this cross over as a matter of fact now in order to see a case where the system is unstable I have changed the game this is the original system we talked about and now uh, uh, this is a high very high gain here so I've reduced the gain and now I'm crossing this the 0 dB here we crossed it here and now I'm crossing it here and of course here we have a problem because here we have the crossover uh, has a very bad uh, actually it's a negative uh, phase margin it's, it's above it's beyond the 180 degree so this is obviously a unstable system so let's see what happens here with the Nyquist uh, we see it here now encircling the minus one point and here is zooming on it let's see again we see this part here going this way and then eventually if I zoom farther this is the minus one point so we go this way and this is obviously an unstable system so now the ultimate test with the one amp step we see that I get a response this is actually going on oscillating I just didn't run it uh, farther now this is an ideal amplifier uh, has no power supply no limits here so we got here above 10 kilovolt of a peak and then it goes on uh, oscillating so this is obviously an unstable system so this actually brings me to the end of this presentation I thank you very much for your attention I hope you have found it interesting and that it will be useful to you in the future thank you very much